Hello and welcome to the lesson video notes for Chapter 7, Lesson 2, Ratios and Similar Polygons. Today's objectives will be to identify similar polygons and apply properties of similar polygons to solve problems. Once again, remember you have uh, always need to fill out the vocabulary terms in the notebook and in your note packet before you begin watching the video. Alright, if you are ready to begin, we will take a look at the first part of our lesson. Vocabulary terms include similar, similar polygons, and similarity ratio. Figures that are similar, and we use this similar, called the tilde, to represent similar figures. It's like the top of a congruence symbol without the equal sign. They have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. In this case, triangle 1 is similar to triangle 2, and this is how we would write that. Triangle 1, and normally we'll label the triangle with its vertices, is similar to triangle 2. Triangle 1 is not similar to triangle 3. Okay, this is a symbol for not similar. So, let's talk about similar polygons. Two polygons are similar polygons, if and only if, their corresponding angles are congruent, and their corresponding sides are proportional. So in example 1, we are going to identify the pairs of congruent angles and corresponding sides. Remember, corresponding angles of similar polygons must be congruent. So here we can see that angle N is congruent to angle Q. They're both right angles, so they must be congruent. And angle P is congruent to angle R, because they're both 63 degrees. By the third angle's theorem, angle M is congruent to angle T. So writing these three pairs of congruent corresponding angles satisfies the first part of the instructions. The sides that correspond would always be proportional. So I'm going to pick a side to start with in one triangle, in this case MP. It doesn't matter which side we pick first, but I'm going to start with the left one and then go to the right one. Again, it doesn't matter if you follow that order, as long as you stick with that order throughout the entirety of your problem. MP to TR, and write what that ratio is. 2.2 .2 over 1.1 simplifies to 2. Then I'm going to pick another ratio of corresponding sides. If MP, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle, is proportional to TR, the hypotenuse of the other one, then the corresponding legs must be proportional. The longer leg, MN, would correspond to the longer leg, TQ. MN to TQ is 2 over 1, that is also 2. And then the shorter leg, NP, to the shorter leg, QR, 1 to 0.5, is also the ratio 2. And so these are proportional, they all equal the same ratio, 2 over 1. A similarity ratio is the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides of two similar polygons. So if I said the similarity ratio of triangle ABC to triangle DEF, the order is important there, we're starting with triangle ABC, then going to DEF, that would be 3 to 6, or 1 half. But if I change the order to the similarity ratio of DEF to ABC, we say that ratio is 6 to 3, or 2. So the order in which you label your figures determines the order in which you label your ratio. Writing a similarity statement is like writing a congruence statement. Be sure to list the corresponding vertices in the same order. So in example 2a, we're going to determine whether these polygons are in fact similar. If so, we should write the similarity ratio and the similarity statement. So we have rectangles a, b, c, d and EFGH. Now those letters are going to be important. AB would correspond to EF. BC corresponds to FG and so on and so forth. So what we have here is that they are rectangles. Remember that in a rectangle all four angles are right angles. So, all four angles here would correspond to all four right angles here, so corresponding angles are congruent. All angles of a rectangle are right angles and are congruent. So we can say A is congruent to E, B is congruent to F, C is congruent to G, and D is congruent to H. Now even though all of them are right angles, the order is important. Let me show you the picture again. 
A and E are in the same position, so they're corresponding. B and F are in the same position, so they're corresponding, and so on and so forth for C, G, and D, and H. So we must label this order as such. Now we're going to compare the corresponding sides. If you remember, AB is 6, EF is 4. So AB to EF is 6 to 4. Well, that simplifies to 3 to 2. BC to FG, BC is 9, FG is 6, so 9 to 6 is also 3 over 2. Because the rectangles, opposite sides are also congruent, so CD and GH would have that same ratio as do EB to EF. And lastly, DA to HE and BC to FG would also have the ratio 3 to 2. Since corresponding sides are proportional, they all have the same equal ratios, we can say the similarity ratio is 3 to 2, and rectangle ABCD is similar to rectangle EFGH. This sentence needs to be written in your notes. All right, let's take a look at example 2B. Again, we are going to determine whether or not these triangles are similar. In order for triangles to be similar, their angles that correspond must be congruent, and the side lengths that correspond must be proportional. So the first thing we're going to do is check the angle measurements. As we look at the pairs of congruent corresponding angles, or what we're trying to verify are congruent corresponding angles, we need to find the other angle measurements. You'll notice triangle PQR is an isosceles triangle, and STW is also isosceles because they have congruent legs here and here. So we need to find the other measurements. Angle P and R must be congruent, and angle S and W must be congruent. So measure of angle P and measure of angle R must be half of the difference of 180 and 36. I do 180 degrees minus 36 to find out what the sum of these two would be, and then divide it in half. So each angle measures 72 degrees for P and R. But you'll notice the corresponding angle to P is S, which is 62 degrees. The measure of angles W and S are 62 degrees. That means the measure of angle T is 56, which is not the same as 36. So no pairs of angles are congruent. That means these triangles cannot be similar. We don't even have to check side lengths. Even though the side lengths are proportional here and here, the angle measures are not congruent, so these are not similar triangles. When you work with proportions, be sure that your ratios compare corresponding measures. Don't get the orders mixed up. So in our last example of this lesson, we are given a situation where we have a model car fashioned after a full-size race car. The full-size racing car has a length of 5 meters and a width of 1.8 meters. The model has a width of 6.3 centimeters, but the length is unknown. So we need to find the length to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Remember, that will mean one decimal point. We're going to let x be the length of the model in centimeters. The rectangular model of the racing car is similar to the rectangular racing car itself, so the corresponding lengths are proportional. So we can set up a ratio of length to width of the model, which would equal length to width of the racing car. Okay, Or we could write the ratio of length of the racing car to the length of the model equals width of the racing car to width of the model. Either proportion will give us the same final answer, even though they will look different at the beginning. So if I compare length to length, that's 5 to x. If I compare width to width, that's 1.8 to 6.3. This ratio would be the same as the one we mentioned earlier. So the next step is to cross multiply. Remember, to solve proportions, we set the cross products equal. So we're going to say that 5 times 6.3 equals 1.8 times x. So we're going to start by simplifying 5 times 6.3, which is 31.5. And then I can divide both sides by 1.8. So x, in this case, to the nearest tenth would be 17.5 centimeters. Now I mentioned we could solve another proportion and get the same answer. If I compared the length of the racing car to the width of the racing car, 
that would be 5 over 1.8. That should still equal the length of the model to the width of the model. The length of the model is x, the width of the model is 6.3. This is a slightly different looking proportion, but if you solve this, you will still get 17.5 centimeters, because we're still taking the same cross product. I'm still multiplying 5 times 6.3, and still multiplying 1.8 times x. We still get the same cross products. So that's how we get the same final result. Just to recap our work, the length of the model is 17.5 centimeters. And that concludes our notes for lesson six or seven two, excuse me, chapter seven, lesson two. And you'll notice this video is a little bit shorter. Um, but again, we're just applying the proportions from lesson seven one into similar figures. Remember, for figures to be similar, for polygons to be similar, similar their corresponding angles must be congruent their corresponding side lengths must be proportional.